So, uh, Paul, uh, yesterday you spoke uh, very persuasively about, about Africa. Do you, th do you think that things are improving around the continent? Yeah, so the theme of my uh, talk yesterday was about um, exploration and how to encourage it. And from our perspective, um, the Standard Bank, where we don't cover the whole continent, but we do cover 20 uh, markets south of the desert, there are a number of themes coming through in exploration that we think are, are worthy of uh, uh, further consideration by the industry and the relevant governments. Uh, and are there things in particular that uh, need to change? I, th I think so. What we're looking at, um, if you follow the, the energy thesis around the world, global oil demand will increase probably one, one and a bit percent per annum, gas a bit more. Um, and demand is going to increase by far less than population and GDP going forward. So within that space, it's really crucial for African governments to understand uh, where their resources sit competitively, especially against the challenge of the Americans going forward. And what we've been struck by is the projections from the likes of BP that throughout the 2020s, um, America will be producing over 20 million barrels of liquids per day, covering oil, tight oil, and NGLs. And that will peak at about 23 million barrels in 2030 and then decline. So the key issue from our perspective is really to encourage um, African exploration. How can it be um, assured that the guys putting the money in and will have access to a market in the future. You, you noted that demand for gas was, was growing faster than oil. What sort of prospects are there for gas growth around Africa? Yeah, according to the energy projections, gas is expected to grow at 2% per annum, LNG 4% per annum going forward. And what's noteworthy over the last three years is really three different LNG uh, centres have developed in Africa. Um, you have Senegal, Mauritania that took FID in December, you had Cameroon before that, and you have the biggest one of all, Mozambique, where um, floating LNG projects are already under construction and two onshore LNG projects are expected to take FID this year. And the common theme across all of those three developments is really the speed of development. And do you think that the, uh, the uh, super majors are seeing the uh, progress that they need to in terms of uh, approving new developments? Yeah, again, what, what's coming through is uh, a challenge to the traditional mode of African project development. So you have some projects that have taken an awful long time, um, haven't yet closed or have, have essentially been in, in the same space for a while. Kudu is the classic development, uh, but interior oil has also taken its time to develop in places like Uganda. And in contrast, you have very fast developments. Um, in the north, you have Egypt, Zor, you have Senegal, Mauritania, as I mentioned. You now have Mozambique, all of which are really going from first exploration to FID in less than a decade. And really our contention going forward is that um, if the new African exploration provinces want to have a place in the market of the late 2020s and the 2030s and beyond, it is essential really to uh, speed up processes as much as possible um, to ensure that there is a competitive space for new African exploration. And that sounds like it's going to take an awful lot of money to uh, get to the point where uh, there's uh, competing uh, production from Africa. Is, is, is the sort of bank uh, market uh, appetite there for sustaining that, that sort of investment? Um, I'm not so sure there's, there's any more money required from it because the technical processes will be the same. It's arguable that even less money is needed because the developments will be done in a shorter time period. Um, but what has always been the case is for uh, the largest projects, uh, there are always multiple sources of capital available for them, uh, whether it be corporate on balance sheet, as was done by BP for Senegal, Mauritania, um, or traditional project financing, as has been adopted by each of um, Anadarko and Exxon Mobil and I for the Mozambique LNG projects. So for the right project, uh, developed over the right time frame with the right economics, um, there's traditionally been no shortage of capital, and we don't expect that to change. And as a sort of a final question, have you, have you enjoyed the summit and, and, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, what you've done here? Um, it's a very good summit. It's actually the first time I've been to this one in, in London. I've been to um, other events organised by Frontier. Um, you've got a very high quality set of speakers. Um, they, they are generally talking to uh, pertinent prospects. There's good, a good access to the industry well and, and it's very well organised. So it develops its reputation as a, as a growing event in the London scene. Lovely. Thank you very much, Paul.